Hello everybody, I am Nutrix the Synth Guy and welcome to this end of the year video about the top apps for making music on your iPad. I do this every year, at least for the last five years. And uh, this year is a little bit different because I've been looking at what I use this year and I don't always use the latest app. What I mean by that is you will not find that all the best top apps on the iPad for making music today are those who were released this year. Some of them are, and others have been there for years. And it's something that is really important because I want to be able to buy an app that I get inspired by, that I can work with, that I like, that I want to go back to. And I want to see the, the, the developers updating it so it works. One thing that happened this year is that iOS 16 came out and iPad OS 16 came out. And when I updated to these software, these OSs for my iPhone and iPad, some of my oldest apps just stopped working. And the information for Apple was very simple. It's like, this software has not been updated. Please ask the developer to you know, to do it. And then you had a choice of erasing it or keeping it as kind of a cloud base, but not you're not able to run it. So having these older software that companies updates so you can still work with them, for me, that's a huge point for them. So I'm going to talk about the top 25 developers you should follow, the brand, the makers, the, the one the people making the software we want to use and we are ready to pay for, or sometimes they're free, thank you. But it's really important that don't focus only on the latest because some of the great apps are maybe two, three years old and still being updated today. And that's the huge plus. Here's the top 25 developers for iOS music production that you should follow today. When they release something, you should look at it. You know it's going to be quality. It might not be what you need. Don't buy it. But you should at least look at what they're releasing because they're doing great stuff. They have been doing great stuff in the last years. So I'm following them, and you should look at them. You might find stuff in their backlog of apps that are exactly what you're looking for, but it has been released a year ago. Here we go in alphabetical order. So the first one is Four Pockets. Four Pockets have been around for a, a, not since the beginning of the iPad music, but almost. And they have a lot of things. They have a lot of plugins. They have MIDI stuff. They have synthesizers. And one that I actually enjoy right now is the Copperhead synthesizer, which is really cool. It's a very com complete synthesizer, um, analog sounding virtual analog, so great new software. But if you go back to the brand itself, they do a lot of things. They've got sequencer that use like a MIDI sequencer, but is a, a plugin. So keep in mind that some of the apps we'll talk today are meant to be used as a plugin inside a DAW, and others, I feel they're meant to be used not in a DAW, but in AUM, which is more of an open type of approach where each part can be kind of a modular system. And so AUM is is at all AUM has opened a lot of other options than traditional DAW type of approach. So you've got the vocalist, which is a plugin for cleaning up your, you know, enhanced vocal recordings. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you have it here. Next one. Audio Kit Pro. Audio Kit Pro, I talked about them in some of my videos. They're, they're providing open source code that everybody can use to create audio stuff. It's an audio kit for developers. With them and with their help, a lot of different plugins came out in the last years. And they're behind Jam with Jordan, uh, Audio Kit Reverb, uh, lit, uh, the uh, Digitalism. 2000, they have also uh, Audio Kit Retro. My preference, I mean, there's there's the synth one. Uh, 
There's the Digi Digital D1. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Baby Audio. Baby Audio has been around for a couple of time. You have uh, Crystalline that came out this year, which is a pretty cool reverb. Very graphic, very visual to actually work with it. Uh, it's easy to see what you're doing. I'm going to do a video about it soon. And you have these other free, like the Pit Drift, the Baby, uh, the Magic Dice, the Magic Switch. These are very simple yet pretty fun free plugins. Beep Street. Beep Street, I still use a lot of their stuff from the Xeon synth. This thing for me is one of the really cool sounding, really warm sounding virtual analog synthesizer on the iPad. It's a Xeon synth. PW is for pulse with. So then you've got, in this case, you've got direct current. Uh, you have also Drambo, which is kind of a modular DAW, could be a synth, could be a drum machine, could be a effects processor. It's kind of a complex in a way, but it has that open modular type of approach. You have the Sunriser synth, which is a really cool sounding, I would say, almost JP8000 type of sound, minus the cross uh, modulation. One of my favorite company making stuff for the iPhone and iPad and Mac, um, you have Bliss. Bliss that has, uh, this year was Megalit. And Monolit that came out. Monolit is free, if I'm not mistaken. the Omega, which is an FM synth. As soon as you have one that you find interesting, like this one. What you should do is then play around with the algorithms. We have uh, a lot of plugins, preset plugins, bunch of them. And um, we have the Alpha synthesizer. So there's four of their synthesizers are part of my short list of the one I go back to. The Alpha is one of the first synth I use uh, when I start a song. And some sync sound, because it's always fun. In, in the iPad, because it sounds so rich and it's easy to make complex sound and fun sounds. Brand Boss, that is behind the latest Fluss. I, I haven't used it, but uh, I'm sure gonna have to play with it at one point. Hammerhead, that was came out last year. <music> Woot was still a great plugin for destroying sounds, I would say. And give it some movement, it's really cool. I just squash the hook, open up. Uh, there's a lot of plugins. Some of them are MIDI, some of them are drum machines, some of them are synthesizers. All the Ripple Maker, the Maker, the Troublemaker, the Rush Maker FM. The, the, so there's a lot of stuff there for you. And they all have this uh, this interface that invites you to experiment, you know, which is something really interesting when you're making music. You want to experiment, you want to have try different things, and you have a bunch of really cool effects processor also. Kalem Audio. Kalem Audio that uh, has been more and more present in you know the iOS world of audio. You have the Flux Mini that was there. Now this year we have the Flux Pro. Imagine this. Imagine how complex that is. Um, we have Beef. Just like sizzling, the crackling at the same time. Just very short and nasty. We got Schlapp, that was last year, Schlapp. So of course, this sounds totally different. This sounds like it, it's, it's not a clean compressor, it's just it creates some bizarre sound. And you can overdriven, overdrive the input. 
I still love that one. Uh, this year it came out also with uh, what they call the the dustbin, which is basically <laughs> the simulator of a dustbin resonator, if you want. And we have roast beef uh, now that just been released in a couple of weeks. I put David Blake there because I really love the Bit Maestro. It's one of my favorite distortion, I would say digital distortion unit uh, plugin that exists on the iOS. It's it's easy to use and it's just like nasty sounding. If I bring the other one, and if I get rid of this one, I just keep that one. It becomes tiny and goes back big. I like that. It, it, it feels like you're going to lose the sound and it comes back. Jim, Jim Odio, now Dmitry Pavlov behind Pure Acid, which is a really cool 808, 909, 303 type of, uh, you know, module. You probably know about this one. If you don't, you should look into it. You've got Groove Writer, uh, which is a Great groove box, all in one, that has cool sounds and um, you know a whole thing to make a beatbox uh, groove. And the Poison Two Two Vintage Synthesizer, which is kind of the synthesizer that is in the groove box we just talked about. It exists as a plugin itself, and then you can use this in other apps. So this is AU uh, AUV three compatible, and this the closest I can find. It's it's really. Uh, trying to get the same type of sound as the 90s sounds of the JP8000. So you get the cutoff filter, the cutoff point, you get the resonance. Let's go back to something that is. And you have soft resonance. Pretty, pretty cool sounding for this one. Eventide, Eventide, which is, you know, a brand that you probably know from the last you know, 30 to 40 years, they've been with hardware for a long time, and they attacked the world of iPad and iOS in the last years. And this year, we didn't see too much new stuff, uh, not a lot of new plugins coming out, but still what they have is there. It works well, it sounds really cool. Uh, you have a huge amount of these plugins. Uh, my pref you know, my preference is, is the black hole. <laughs> Reverb, the ultra tap, a delay, the crush station. For me, this is what they call crushing. That is really cool. Get rid of the sag and the whole presence. It sounds like a guitar, but it comes from a, drum, a, a piano. And then if you put the gate on it, the shimmer verb. These are just, I mean, they're really cool sounding and, and fun to play. So FabFilter is a brand that you know on, on Mac and PC. They've been there making great plugins and they exist on the iOS also now. If you want good quality plugins, you know you're going to get some of them with them. Then we have a developer from France, Frédéric Corvet which is behind FAC, FAC Medusa. Just that, this is wonderful. Imagine, my sound was like this. FAC Drum Kit, FAC Phaser, Alteza, Bandit, Involver. They're all different. I'm pretty sure he's going to create one for each alphabet letters. <laughs> so um, it's 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 it could be anything in this case. You've got chorus, you've got uh, a maximizer, you've got uh, a drum kit, you've got... So the drum kit is an instrument where most of the other ones are uh, effect processor and they're really cool sounding. And they all, he's, he always has a different approach it gives you a little tweak that you didn't see somewhere else uh, like the medusa which is a compressor it's also a saturator it's also an eq so and some of them i look at them as being effect processor like boutiques effects processor like uh yeah 
And some of the plugin that he makes, um, for me, I look at them as being boutiques effects, like a pedal board that you would buy your own pedal and just patch them the way you want. We have IQ Multimedia. There's a lot of plugins with them. Of course, if you're a guitar player, you've got a lot of emulation of different types of instrument, amplifier and, 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 and toning, pedals and all that stuff. I really like uh, Mixbox. And I'm running a tape echo here, inverse reverb, saturator, channel strip, a compressor, and an auto pan. So it gives that movement in it. If I turn off everything. So the mix box is really interesting because it has a huge amount of effects in them. You can run multiple of them. You can create chains and each of them can be used as an effect uh, for inserts from external devices it's it's a pretty cool thing that's one of my favorite uh but there's a lot of other things from IQ multimedia like centronics for synthesizers and also uh mastering effects room mic room uh, there's i mean there's a ton of them here to play with Imaginendo. Imaginendo is, is a company that makes different, really weird synthesizers that are actually pretty fun. You have the, the frames, the FRMS, I would call them frames. It's a granular synthesizer, you put stuff there and you need to really make them into something else. But by default, it opens the door to just You have the delay, you have the DRC, polyphonic synthesizer, which is pretty cool. I'll make a video about it, should be here. And the one I really dig this year and I had fun playing with it is the VS, the, the visual synthesizer. And this is cool because as a music maker, at one point you want to create image that goes with it. And the VS is really cool, either for live or for making a video clip that goes with your your song. So you can actually trigger four video at the same time, four layers, four voices, four notes if you want, but they're images. So that's why you see that. From K Aras, we have a bunch of really fun things to have. You have the agonizer, and let's say modulation wobulator main. This is where this thing shines. We got the shockwave synth. We got FM. You have the MIDI spy. You've got, uh, I have the wave modulator, the vault synthesizer, uh, and a bunch of, you know, uh, different effects you can have also. But like, the wave modulator, something that is, if you want to create a FEM modulation, if you want to create other type of modulation, it's a great place to be because it, it is a modulator that creates a FEM with anything you put in. So <laughs> pretty cool to have. Kev Grand, Kev Grand is behind Grand Finale 2. I actually did a demo about it. You can play with the width to make it wider. So depending on the type of mix you have, and what's interesting is at the bottom here, you have these different, I would say, algorithms. A really cool plugin for mastering, but you can just use it as a effect suite if you want. Uh, you also have a bunch of other effects in there. Really a question of which one you want to have, but there's really a ton of really cool sounding stuff. And one that I actually use for cleaning up my tracks is Brosfri. Brosfri, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, this one actually samples background noises and then take it out of a recording. So for voice, if I get a background noise that is always there, I sample with brush free uh, before editing the rest of my voice. So I can clean it up and get rid of like, background noises. Really cool. KV331 Audio behind Synthmaster. Uh, Synthmaster 2 and Synthmaster Player and Synthmaster 1. I actually got them this year, Synthmaster 2. I bought it this year, Synthmaster 1. I already had it before. And I'm really happy about what it does. It's super powerful. I'm going to make videos about this um, very soon. But it's, it's a very complete synthesizer. A very, uh, I would say, full-fledged, big synthesizer. Kimatica, which is behind 
AUM, for example. So really important to, because in the world of music, KUM is now a, a go-to app for the iPad. And then you get a bunch of, I would say, modular approach. These are uh, AUV3 uh, plugins that can appear inside AUM or anywhere else. And you've got a bunch of them. Like So it could be EQ, it could be uh, uh, Distortion, Reverb, Moog Music, of course. You know them. You have Animoog this year that came out, or actually last year, Z. You only had the original Mini Moog. We have the Model 15. So a bunch of really cool sounding and cool. Now, these are interesting because if you buy them on the iOS, it works on the iPad, iOS, iPhone, and the Mac. So, of course, you need to have Mac OS 12, but then you have you buy it once, you have it on the three platforms. So really interesting in that approach. The Oliver Gretschke, I would say. Elastic Audio is still one of the cool drum machine elastic. You can create your own sound either with virtual synthesis or for sampling. There you go. How does it make such a wide area or choices of sounds you can have here? And you get a really powerful box of four effects with real-time control to create movement in your effects processing. So the next one is Roland. Of course, I'm a Roland fan. I got gear. I'm a little bit sad that Roland doesn't have more stuff on the iPad. But right now, what they have is my favorite DAW on iOS. It's Zenbeats. Zenbeats exist on iOS. So iPhone, iPad, Mac, PC, and Android. Subdivides. And you can all save on the cloud and exchange between these versions, which is amazing. Two thumbs up for Roland because since Zenbeats appeared on the market, it has been updated many, many times and with new features and easier and easier and, and it's answering people's requests. So um, again, it's my favorite DAW to work on Mac or iPad right now, Zenbeats. Sugar bites are behind a ton of really fun effects and synthesizers, mostly synthesizers, you know, the unique. Okay, so we only have this. Put it the same note. Okay, and then. The Epirillo. It's really, really different. Cyclop, I like Egoist, that's a cool one. Wow is a really powerful um, effects processor. Again, it has that really cool sound. Factory is also pretty weird. Drum computer is a, another cool sounding drum machine. So sugar bites, you have to know them, you have to follow them. Drum boosters, they have a ton of different plugins. A spectrogram, compressor. Oh, here we go, Let's see what you got. I've got a compressor. I can also compress here. Morphit, uh, Morphit is really interesting because you can use that to adapt the audio out of your mix for your headphones when you're mixing with headphones so that if headphones do not affect the quality of the mix. I could do another video just to talk about that, but it's really a cool app. And now they have a synthesizer with Flowtone, which I bought and it's Pretty cool one, unfiltered audio, which is making these weird apps that are fun, like the, the vinyl simulator that everybody's talking about right now. Uh, you have the Lo-Fi AF, which is also really cool and, and you know making really gritty sounds. So you should look at what unfiltered audio is doing. And I will finish with Yonak, which is behind stuff like Trooper that came out this year which is kind of a mini Moog uh, synthesizer. Uh, Magellan 2, they have the Magellan 1, there's Cauldron. Uh, Cauldron is, and Magellan are, I mean, they're, 
They've been there for years, but they have that huge, huge warm sound. So really, I think that they're a big fans of Moog sound, and you can feel it in the way they approach these synthesizers. And they're not replication of Moog synthesizers. They are, I think they're inspired by them because they, they have that really cool vibe and, and vibe and sound to them. Well, that's it. My 25 makers, developers brand that I follow to see what they're releasing because when they release something, it's pretty sure it's going to be good. Might not be what I need, but I'm going to have to listen to that because it's pretty usually well done and it sounds really awesome. That's it for today. I hope this is useful. And again, any question, you put them below in the comments and see you soon. Take care. Have a great new year.